our own puppet rocket who will bring this morning's message. Good morning, good morning everyone. Welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and that includes those on the World Wide Web. And on this special day when we celebrate friendship and love. My topic this morning is I love me. I deserve to have a good life. My granddaughter, Abigail, I'm never tired of speaking about, who is five years old, just became five. I am so convinced that she has been sent to be my guru because I keep learning from her, just looking and marveling. We were traveling home one evening this week when she declared boldly that she had made a beautiful card with a heart on it. And she said, guess what's written on it? I didn't answer. And she said proudly, I love you. Wonderful, I said. You made it for your mommy and daddy. Isn't that great? She said, no, I made it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Someone once said, learning to love the self and the self of others is the soul's greatest achievement in life. Our Abigail is just a bundle, a miracle of love. I don't know if it's a grandparent eyes, but yeah, Rhonda says yes. <laughs> but my husband and I just spent hours marveling at how unlimited she seems to be, how she doesn't seem to recognize boundaries. He said, she, she has, she's so courageous. I said, no, she doesn't know that what she's doing is something that most children her age may not do. She knows no boundaries. And so we sit there and just feel the warmth of love just looking at her. But the most important thing that I've learned from her, she might be sitting playing quietly and then suddenly, it is as if she's overcome with a burst of love and she just runs to somebody, anybody and says, I love you, and I love when she says, I love you, Grandma. I love you so much. But she doesn't confine it to us. The security at our office, she hugged him and said, I love you, I'm gonna take you home with me. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that as we watch and feel that wonderful warmth we call love, we are reacting to that love which she is radiating. One of my favorite songs expresses the sentiment this way. Learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. To love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance, said Oscar Wilde. To love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. A little known writer, Zinat Merchant Sial, in the book Positive Provocation, extolled the virtues of self-love. Self-love is an ongoing choice to make, to be glad to be alive here on earth in your own body. You decide who you are and that what you want to do is important. It comes with a passion to be happy no matter what. You give yourself permission to go after your dreams. And Frank Richelieu, in his book, The Art of Being Yourself, shared this. We must learn to love ourselves. 
He says we must learn to love where we are, where we are, not where we wished we could be. If we do, we will be carried to great heights of consciousness. And he continues to love. The love which I'm referring to cannot be forced. It cannot be manufactured or pretended. It is not sentimental. It is an outpouring of goodwill and reverence for life. It radiates to the hearts of all people and all things. In my eyes, self-love is not egotistical. Egotism is placing yourself above others as yourself as an exception, thinking yourself better than others who do not appear to be doing what you do or having what you have. To be caught up in your exception is that there is no room to see another's beauty. It is to be like a black hole, you know, the black hole in the universe. Everything goes in, nothing comes out. Self-love begins with acknowledgement of the beauty, power, and majesty of the self, the big self, the indwelling self, the spirit of divinity within ourselves, as it is in everyone. Love is a creative, cohesive force. When we love, we bind ourselves to others, even those strangers who we pass on the street. But love is about being. Doing is but one of the fruits of love, the evidence of love. Doing is, in fact, a product of love. Love is more than that feeling or an action. Although actions that spring from love are powerful healers, it is said that there is no difficulty that love will not conquer. Whatever difficulties we may find ourselves in at any time, no matter how insurmountable it appears to be, if we can meet it with the marvelous realization of love, we can rise above it and do whatever it is necessary to handle it. But what is this love? It is easy to get so caught up in the business of doing loving things because it is the right thing to do, that we forget the heart of love, the being of love. For example, cultures may pass laws, organize charities, make sacrifices in the name of love. But all this will do will exhaust your time, your energies, your substance, unless these actions come from individuals and societies whose hearts are overflowing with love. Love is a radiance that comes from within, to fall upon anyone who comes within our presence or our thought field. It does not need an object to be. However, in its presence, all are elevated. Take a moment to ponder where you are along the spectrum of self-love. A comedian, not known for her classical beauty, and it's putting it mildly, gave this assessment of herself. I am so beautiful. Sometimes people weep when they see me. And it has nothing to do with what I look like, really. It is just that I give myself the power to say that I am beautiful. And if I could do that, maybe there is hope for them too. <laughs> and the great divide between the beautiful and what people call ugly cease to be because we are all what we choose. You are valuable no matter what you now think. Every life has a story Every story 
has a lesson to give. Think about it. What is your story? What is your story? These words were from no other than Alicia Keys, the singer. As we love ourselves, we accept that the same qualities we love in ourselves are to be found in every other self. Every relationship you ever have with someone else exactly mirrors one or more aspects of the relationship you have with yourself. Said again by Zina Tsiyab. I believe that our mission in this life is to strive to remove the shades from our eyes that we may behold the beauty of God, the unseen in its manifest form in ourselves and in all others and in all things, this unseen which lies at the center of our being. If we could love ourselves the way that we deserve, we must make this God self, this divine within the object of our adoration, and by extension, adore ourselves as emanations of the divine. When we can do this, we cannot but identify with and express the qualities of God immanent in us. We will be filled with energy and power and joy and radiance that comes from living from the consciousness of love. And nature so wanted us to feel and experience this love that in our biology, there are actually five hormones that are dedicated to us feeling and experiencing this love. Five hormones. There is the hormone that's ethyl amine, right? Methyl ethyl amine, and that is the same as in chocolate. And that makes your, you feel an instant sense of connection with someone who you want to have an intimate relationship with. And then there is epinephrine, which makes your heart go pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, and your hands get sweaty, and your breath merely moves. And then that's your very positive signal that, yes, something is happening inside of me. And then there is oxytocin, which comes when you are touched. It doesn't matter who touches you. So this is the one which says, touch your child. Touch, touch, touch. It causes you to feel a sense of bonding, of natural intimacy and relaxation. And then there is testosterone. That's the one that assures us it's in both males and females, and it guarantees that the human race will continue. Right. Think about it. And then there's endorphin, the greatest healing hormone of them all. You get it whenever you feel a sense of joy, when you exercise, when you feel that sense that I am at ease in the company of anyone. I am just feeling that wonderful, warm, fuzzy feeling that you can't even put a name to it. It really is announcing the presence of God. So nature wanted us to feel this way. And guess what? When we are in this kind of zone, our body takes on a spirit. Every cell gets to experience it and feels and senses a wholeness and a perfection. The only access we have to God is from within our own consciousness. Therefore, let us promise ourselves to spend time with God in the silence. Let us do so with no agenda other than to bask in the glory of being. It is from this wellspring of life that we draw beauty, peace, 
and a sense of awe and adoration, which we call love. And this is what we share as we direct our attention outward to ourselves, to people, places, things, and even experiences. This Marson, again, really I'm impressed. Put it simply, we cannot rise any higher than the own thoughts of ourselves. We cannot rise any higher than the thoughts of ourselves. Think of yourself in this way. I am saturated with the essence of love. I want you to say it with me. I am saturated with the essence of love. It is by turning your attention inward to the self, the big self, that we are able to experience our connection with life, with God, and with all that is. Go into each period of silence with an idea such as, in stillness now, I seek and find the wisdom of the greater mind. And so you invite this presence to reveal itself, its beauty to you in the silence. Fill your heart with songs of adoration and words of praise which comes out of your own realization of being. There is one that I love so much. Open your eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Open my eyes, illumine me, spirit divine. We sing it, you know, but sometimes we need to sing it with a sense of awe and a sense of knowing that we are inviting the presence to reveal its beauty our beauty. And I, there are some words that Dr. Ernest Holmes uttered, and I can know that he uttered it in a sense of realization of intimate experience with God. He says, Almighty God, everlasting Father, eternal Spirit, maker of all things and keeper of my life, infinite presence within, in whom all live, Joy supreme, flooding all with gladness. I adore thee. I adore thee. I think he was experiencing one of those mystical moments. Now, I say to you, loving yourself implies being able to move on mentally from any mistake you may, may have made in the past. If we are feeling, finding it difficult to forget some of the unloving things we may have done in the past, or what we have unlabeled as unloving, if this is keeping us back from a true experience of the love of self, we need only remember that the true self, which is God, in us, as us, the essence of our being knows nothing about our past mistakes. Let us treat our mistakes with great love and respect, for they can be our teachers if we let them. To yourself, always say words like this. I see the beauty and worth of my true being. I see God. I see me. Practice silently saying, to everyone you meet, silently please, I see beauty. I see the beauty and worth of your true being. I see God. I see you. And if you can't remember all of that phrase, just I see God. I see you. My primary relationship is with myself. All others are mirrors of it. As I learn to love myself, I automatically receive the love and appreciation that I deserve from others. I am committed to myself and to living my truth. I attract others with equal commitment. As I love myself, I automatically receive the love and appreciation that I deserve. Recognize your power. Claim your authority. Celebrate your life. Enjoy your own company. 
stay in your gratitude, understand that you are blessed, you are enough. These are not my words, these are the words of the actress Sharon Stone. Sharon Stone. Enjoy your own company. Stay in your gratitude for the beautiful person you are. Understand that you are blessed. Namaste.